Sorry. Hi everyone, uh, this is Kavitharia. I came to Arvin's apartment here and uh, I met Ivelma Belmar. Uh, Ivelmar is from Holland and she has started a YouTube channel called My Search For Me which is about interviewing people about their purpose and how they have found their purpose and their ideas about that and uh, sharing that with her community. So she's come all the way from Holland to London and we're doing the recordings here at Arvin's apartment. So while I was here I thought that let us also interview both of them for our page and just show you a few of their insights about life transformation and uh, how you can be better at what you're doing, how you can be more efficient at what you're doing and also how you can achieve the things that you want to achieve by being more focused, more committed and more purposeful. So just to very quickly introduce you, this is Arvind Devalia. He's the author of Get the Life You Love and Live It, which is very blatantly put here. And uh, it's a book that has tremendously helped me. Arvind's known me for the last 15 years <coughs> and uh, a lot of the insights that he has in his life that he's written in his books that has come from his journey have been very influential for me. So it's always an honor to uh, chat with him and uh, present to you uh, his work and also as I mentioned uh, Idelma Del Mar runs the YouTube channel My Search For Me which you should also go check out. So Arvin, we, we wanted to talk a little bit about the Ultimate Life Transformation System which sure. is your project mm -hmm. and with the Ultimate Life Transformation System you have four keys so run us through what those four keys are first of all and maybe let's together discuss those. Sure, so before I do that also thank you for this little quick impromptu interview and I just wanted to say how inspiring it is always to see you and meet you because you always seem to be doing so much more every time I see you and as you said I've known you almost half your life now and to see you go from a 14 year old kid, I use that word loosely kid, to where you are now and I know you, you doing exactly what you wanted to do, travelling the world and making an impact on a lot of people. So I've seen the way you transform your own life and the four points I want to talk about kind of reflect what you've done in your own life as well. Because to me, the first step is really having clarity. Clarity about what your life is about, what you want to do in your life. When you look back on your life, when you say 70, 80, and you look back and say, wow, what an adventure that was. But that clarity comes now. How can you use your life to make the greatest impact in the world, as well as have an amazing life? And I see you as someone who's doing just that. Um, I think I'm correct in saying that. You are living your dream life. You have got the life you love. So that, to me, all begins with having that clarity. Um, to me, clarity is about also looking at a bigger picture. How can you make an impact in the world? How can you leave behind a legacy? So if you have all that clarity, then I think the rest of the journey becomes much easier. So life transformation begins with that, like having clarity and having a deep insight about what your life is going to be about. So for someone, uh, most of the people that are on this page, um, and I'm intending to share this on the Facebook page, are entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, uh, business people. How does uh, somebody like that, who, who's essentially taking a message to the world, supposed to find clarity? Yeah. Every person I ever coached, whether it's entrepreneur, business person, employee, unemployed, all, it always has been about ultimately what their life is about. It's great because entre entrepreneurs want to go out and create amazing businesses, but ultimately it's about how the impact, how they'll impact the world through what they do. And ultimately, it comes back to what am I here for? So you can have all the toys, adventures, holidays you want, but what I find is that people want something more beyond that. So whatever, whoever your listeners are, your viewers are, the question to ask themselves is, what am I here for? Yes, it's a really good point to ask it, Dunmore, because what you're talking about is purpose, and beyond having the great cars, the great houses, the great holidays, the great aeroplanes, helicopters, whatever people might dream materialistically, there's still something that's beyond that, otherwise it's always going to be an empty void. So what about you, what do you think about clarity? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think a lot of people run around in their lives, they don't really know what they want and they say, well, I want a better job, but can you define that better job? And they think, well, I, I don't really know, or I want more money, but be a little bit more specific, how much money? And because lack of clarity they don't really seem to progress in their lives and they wonder why so i totally agree with your point you first have to know what you want i think be as specific as possible and then you will see that you slowly will progress and i also agree with uh yeah you can you can have all the money and all the 
uh, houses and everything else in the world. But in the end, I think everyone, re what they really want is to serve something bigger than themselves. So One of my favorite books uh, in probably my list of top 20 would be a book called Start With Why uh, by Simon Sinek. Yeah. Um, he wrote, he basically gave a 20 minute speech on TED, on TED and uh, it's one of the most viewed TED talks, I think, in, in, in all of them. And in that, he talks about the golden circle, how very few people know their why, a few of them after that know their how, and a lot of people know what they're doing, but they mm -hmm. don't know it the other way around. And actually, if you work from inside out, then you'll be more likely to have a more fulfilled life. This is what I find, actually, that most people don't know what they want in life. <laughs> and that there are a few who do, but only a few of those actually go and do something about it. Yeah, yeah, there's And even that. those are the sort of people I'm going to be working with, and I guess those are the people who are following you and working with you. Yeah, as well. ultimately it's about action, right? So yeah. you, can, you can still know your why, but if you don't take action with it, what's sure. the point of knowing your why? So to me, that's necessarily the next point, really, is about having clarity about what you want and then being committed to getting there. Yeah. So, again, using you as an example, when I first met you, you, you were doing GCSE or something, but even then you had a vision about how the sort of life you wanted. You used one of my books, my initial book, Get a Life, and I, I still got a copy of that, actually, where you've got your handwritten notes in there about all the things you wanted to do in your life. Mm -hmm. And 13, 14 years later, you're doing all that. So the point is you were committed to something bigger and more than what you had. Because mm -hmm. you could have the clarity, but most people don't have the commitment to go, go out and do it. And I always use the example of, say, Nelson Mandela. He was committed to a free United South Africa. Yes. I mean, he spent 27 years in prison, but he was committed to his vision, and ultimately he did deliver on that vision. Yes. Yeah. I watched the, um, not Nelson Mandela, but Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. I just watched the movie on the flight, actually, just two weeks ago. I don't remember what the movie was called. Selma? Selma, yeah. Beautiful. Brilliant movie. Really and nice. I really recommend that if, for anybody that's uh, going to watch this. So the first point was clarity. What's the second point? Second point is commitment. Commitment, so okay. Get committed. So have yeah. the clarity and then get committed. And then you can be committed, but what I also find is a lot of people lose focus. So you have to remain focused on your, on your vision. So looking at you again, I, from a very... From the beginning, when I first met you, you had this idea about working with music and using the internet to help musicians. And you're still doing that, but you expanded that vision and you've done more around that. But you, you've been very focused on using the internet as a marketing tool and developing that for yourself and others. So, to me, personally, I believe you're one of the most fo focused by people Edelma, I work with. Let me ask you, I don't want to make this about me, but Edelma, what do you think is the um, reason people don't take commitment? or don't take that committed step, like what holds them back? Yeah, that's a good question. I think in the end, it all has to do with fear. Uh, fear, afraid of failure, afraid of what will other people say, afraid of perhaps I don't have the skills, perhaps I can't uh, learn those skills. And yeah, I think in the end that stops people from actually acting. While you see a lot of times, once you take the first step, it's not as bad as you think it is. And once you start telling other people, so a lot of people are inspired or willing to help you along the way. So that might actually encourage you to do what you have envisioned. So yeah. yeah, in Christianity they talk about the seven deadly sins, and uh, I talk about the seven deadly excuses. Mm -hmm. Reasons why people nice. don't start a business online. I don't have enough time, I don't have enough contacts, I don't have enough knowledge, I don't have enough money, I don't have an idea, there's too much risk, yeah. etc. All these things that people just tell themselves because they believe that they're blocking them from starting a business online. Yeah. Yet actually, if you look at it today in this, compared to the rest of history, there's never been a better time to start the yeah. business today. The, 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 the knowledge that you need is available practically for free. The contacts that you need are all on LinkedIn. The money that you need is very little compared to starting a shop on the high street yeah. uh, and so forth. And so the risk mm -hmm. is very, very little. I think you, that's a great point you brought up actually, because right, right now we've got more opportunities than ever before. And a related point is right now there's so much doom and gloom all around us with Brexit and all the other things happening politically and socially around the world right now. But conversely, I say to people that right now we've got the most and the best opportunities ever and there's so many good things happening as well. So let's focus on those and harness those in some way and really get committed to make a better life for yourself and for others as well. Absolutely. So we have clarity and commitment. What are the last two? But so the third one is focus. Okay. So again, once you get committed to it, you've got to focus. You've got to take focused actions every day. Yeah. Um, 
What's your best method for getting focused? Just get down to it. I mean, li literally switch <laughs> off switch off your laptop if you're working, if you're writing, for example, what we should do what I do. Switch off social media. Social media is very powerful, which is really great because we're using social media right now to promote, to show to showcase what we're talking about. But it can take over our life, life. So I say switch off everything and just do that one thing that needs to be done. Yeah. Fantastic. Get off emails. Get off Facebook. And how do you focus in your life, Adelma? What What is it that you keep? Um, what helps me is accountability. When I share it, what I'm going to be doing, and with people would, that I really care about, and I don't want <coughs> to disappoint them. That helps me to stick through and know, oh, well, I've committed to this, I yeah. need to do it. But also the distraction part. If you know that you get distracted easily on the internet or emails, just turn it off and just focus on that one thing. I remember a few years ago, Urban uh, set, set himself a challenge that, I don't remember which year, but in January that month he was going to write 100, 2007. Wow. January 2007, he was going to write 100 blog posts in January. Wow. And if not, then he was going to donate a thousand pounds to you, to me, really? for, your, for, your for, charity. for charity, for, yeah, for charity, charity that I would yeah. get. So, uh, but it was my accountability. I was the accountability part. partner for that yeah. project, yeah. and uh, he got up to January thirtieth, and had published ninety two or ninety three blog posts. Wow. So he had seven articles to write in that last day, unless he did it, and he did it by the midnight and he did on it. the February first. That's really good. So that's just accountability. One way to yeah. think. Uh, I don't think that works for everybody, yeah. but it works for him. Uh, and if, if some people, some people would probably give up instead of doing the challenge because there's so much work to do. So I think it depends so on I think different ways. Also, a related point is once you're really clear about what you want, you don't even need accountability. But if it helps having an accountability partner, then great. But what I find is once I connect to someone with what they really, really, really want, they, they don't need accountability. Just, yes, don't sure. Yeah. Some people need accountability to learn though. So like we partner the client with the coaching, the, the marketing coach, because the marketing coach will give them regular insights, but also keep them focused on a deadline. For someone who's never run a business, deadlines are so important on your own. Like if you work for somebody else and you miss a deadline, you get away with it. Like it's not your project, it's their project. You're making money for somebody else. Beach. But yeah. if you work for someone else, but if you're working for yourself, it's really all down to you. You don't get it done, it doesn't happen. Like mm -hmm. there's no money in the bank. Yeah. So having the, the person to provide that accountability, I think is even yeah. more important. Which is related to the, to the fourth and final point, action. Yes. Because you, could, you could have all the clients in the world, you, you could say you're committed, you're focused, but if you're not taking action, then it's, you're not just not gonna get anywhere. Yeah. So daily action. Um, I remember when I was doing the London Marathon, I got injured a couple of months before and I was training to run the marathon. That was my first one. And the trainer I was really said, look, you've got no chance now. Just de like, defer your place to next year. And I said, well, actually, I'm not, I can't defer it. I don't want to defer it. I'm going to take action now. So I trained myself to walk the marathon. Oh, I did yeah. it in 7 hours 15, which is which is still faster than some people who were running. Yeah. So wow. daily action. I mean, yeah. you mentioned my books earlier on. When I published my first book, the idea came to me middle of October that year, and the vision was, and the claims I had was that I wanted to have the book ready by December, by Christmas. The following four to six weeks, probably the hardest I ever worked. I got an editor in world, I got printers, I got cover designer. All that happened in four to six weeks. Yeah. But I was taking daily action. I was working 17, 18 hours every day. Yeah. And but that's what it takes. Yeah, sure, sure. What does action mean to you? Action means to me um, that it's related to clarity. Action when I know what I need to do in order to progress, so those little steps, it becomes much easier as well to take that action. So, um, yeah, some, some things can uh, seem quite overwhelming, but there are always little things you need to do in order to get closer. And sometimes it just means finding the right people who have the expertise that you don't have yet, yeah. but might be able to uh, fasten the whole process. So. A absolutely, of absolutely great. Yeah. So we talked about the your ultimate life transformation system: clarity, commitment, focus, and action. So now I want to ask you, Adelma, because your show is about my search for me, which is ultimately about uh, finding one's purpose or finding one's why. Yeah. And you've interviewed a few people, and quite a few, and you're going to release many of the videos on YouTube. Yes. What would you say are uh, one or two of the highlight points that stick out for you from the people that you've interviewed? Oh, okay, that's a really good question. Um, so one of the highlights when it comes to my search for me, uh, I did one interview with a lady, she's quite passionate about the health of your eyes, that, that's her complete focus wow. in life. And she, there's a story behind that, of course. 
but what really became clear is that some people really are, are trying to find what is their passion, what, what is their life mission. But what she said to me is that along the way there were different signs along the way and all of a sudden it became more clear to me that this is the right path for me. And then at a certain point I needed to take action of course, but she was willing to do that and she ended up with her dream job in her right. eyes. Right. So it's not always about uh, really trying to get hold of what is it that I want to do, but also listen to what happens along the way and the signs within you. I mean, um, yeah. When you're quiet and listen to yourself, you might find out more than you think. Absolutely. So that was a, a, a nice uh, highlight. Um, yeah, and another one I think also think about uh, what gives you energy. I mean, and the things that are drowning energy from you, but also the people around you and the job. That's probably not what will help you um, yeah, get to what you want ultimately. But the people that give you a lot of energy and activities, that will. So sure, sure. just listen to the energy part. One of the well. earlier books that I, I read was a book called The Energy Bus by okay. John Gordon. And he talks about uh, energy vampires. He says, uh, figure out what those things are that suck energy out of you yeah. and never do them again. Or find a way to eradicate them. If there are people, find a way to break those friendships. If there are um, if they're activities, find a way to delegate them if they need to be done. And if they don't need to be done, find a way to remove them. Yeah. What are those energy vampires? Because that energy that's getting sucked up is making it double harder for you to take energy in the action that actually needed yeah. you're doing. So, yeah, great. Well, thank you both. Uh, this is a short, quick thing. And uh, thank you for sharing those insights. I hope everybody on Facebook enjoyed that. And look forward to more soon. I will add uh, both of these guys on Facebook so that you can ask them questions underneath the video. And if, if you have any questions, they'll be happy to answer and so will I. So, see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.